I am from Argentina and I am studying at the academic at the Diplomatic Academy in, in Buenos Aires. It's called ISEN. And I've been invited to this forum by Diplo Foundation because I've attended an online uh, capacity building course throughout the year. And so, well, that's why I'm, I'm here. And in January, I will be appointed diplomat. So I, I will try to apply all this knowledge I acquired uh, in my country. So that will be a very great challenge. Um, I think capacity building is a very important pillar in the internet governance process uh, because I think it, it, it must have a, a multiplier or spillover effect. Uh, I mean, beyond the personal impact capacity building may have on each person that takes place in these uh, e-learning courses, I think that uh, the final aim is to uh, provoke a uh, regional and, and, and social impact in local communities. Uh, and I think that's the, the great challenge. And there I, thi I think that the, 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 the main point is how to transfer those knowledge from theory to practice. And that is where I will try to start working from January. I mean, as diplomat, I will try to implement different programs so, to, so as to uh, apply this knowledge and change things in, in my country or in the world. So. Yes, uh, for example, the, the f I think that as, as diplomat I will have three uh, areas or three layers of work. One will be, well, the international work which means uh, negotiating with other countries, uh, created uh, coalitions, especially with developing countries, so as to advance our interests. Uh, the second one is inside each state. I, I mean, the state is not a realist thought, a unified or coherent actor. I mean, there are different agencies. And so I will have to interact with different agencies inside the Argentinian state which have different interests, different approaches to internet governance. So I think I will try to somehow influence the policy uh, decision making. And the third one, and I think it's the first step, if I could, I, I would uh, take, is uh, to interact with NGOs and civil society in order to receive their inputs because I think they have uh, a real deep insight and knowledge about all these aspects and I think the government must take those inputs into consideration. And I mean, I think as diplomat I should act as a bridge between the, the global uh, uh, governance or the global um, process and the local. So I have to go f from the global to the local and from the local to the global and articulate both spheres. So I think that, that would be the challenge. But I think it, it must be very difficult. I think this, this is a, 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 a mutual confidence building, first of all, because I don't know yet if my government or the government in general are taking this uh, perspective into account. But first of all, I think there must be a confidence building uh, and, and um, a creation of confidence to create a relationship, to create an atmosphere of dialogue so, so as to avoid uh, prejudices or um, preconcepts and I think it is very important to include their voice in the process. Of course the, the, the final decision is in the government who has to take into consideration other aspects, other issues because internet government governance is not an isolated issue, it is related to other issues as well. So having the broad picture you have to make linkages and sometimes you have to make concessions, but well, that is diplomacy. So, uh, but I think uh, many NGOs have a real specialization on certain aspects, so I think their input could be very, very important. 
and in the negotiation um, process they could add another voice, perhaps that not going to be the final voice, but it is very important to include it uh, in the decision making process. Uh, what I hope or what I think that would happen. What you hope. Um, okay, for of the reality in developing and developed countries is completely different. Um, we can imagine internet as having three layers. Uh, the first one is the infrastructure, then you have the, the protocols or the logical layer, and then you have the content layer. Uh, I think in developing countries the main uh, concern uh, is focus on the infrastructure. I mean, access is a big problem. So I think in developing countries the first step should be to uh, facilitate the access to internet uh, to a great majority of the population, especially in rural areas, because in, in cities it may be easier, but in rural areas it is more difficult. Um, so this will be the first step. While in developed countries, I think the discussion is another one. For example, there has been a, recently there has been a debate on net neutrality, for example, in the United States. And this is more related to the second layer, I mean to the, to the um, logical layer. And if there is going to be a two-tier internet and some, and some kind of discrimination. But I think in, in developing countries we are, we are not yet at that level. I mean we are discussing access before being able to discuss net neutrality. Although that debate in the United States may have effect all around the world because if they start discriminating the flow of information for different reasons, this may affect developing countries as well. But I think in developing countries access is the first and the main concern. So uh, I hope this will be improved in the future. This needs investment, uh, but I don't support a totally free market approach. I mean, I think that handoff solution is not a real, a real solution. I think uh, uh, political approach or holistic approach taking into account political aspect, legal aspect. I think some kind of uh, legislation is necessary. Uh, so I think that the government has to take, uh, has to participate in the process, both at, na at international and uh, national level, but it has to be a really focused uh, legislation. That not to suffocate the process, but I think some kind of guidance or um, certain frames are necessary because there are vulnerable, vulnerable groups that need some protection and um, that's why, well, I think not a free market, not a total free market uh, solution will be appropriate. Not only in developing countries, but in developed countries as well. That's why, for example, in the United States, some actors want the Congress to pass a law uh, to defend uh, the net neutrality. So it means that market is positive, but the government has to, and the state has to be present as well. Uh, if they don't have access, they will be emarginalized um, from the, this global ocean of information that is the internet and this of course will widen uh, the divide. This is what we call the digital divide. So they will have less opportunities in, in, in many aspects in commerce, uh, having the possibility to have access to information. Uh, I mean they will be outside the, the, the informa information hyperway and I think this may be negative and that is why I think access is uh, the first step towards reducing the, the digital divide. I mean having access has many benefits uh, that developed countries have and in developing and but even inside developed countries and inside developing countries, you have like um, national divisions because again, you have rural areas, urban areas, 
we have different social classes, so it's not homogeneous. But in general, in general, we talk about um, developing countries. But inside them, I, I want to say there are differences. It's not the same, and different uh, developing countries have different realities. So it's very difficult to to talk in general. But well, I, I think access is the main concern. Uh, not what I hope, what I think. Um, I fear that there may be some kind of fragmentation in the internet, different, of, different kind of fragmentations. Some may be positive and some may be negative. I mean, um, one form of fragmentation could be the two-tire internet. I mean, if the net neutrality is not respected, this could lead to uh, a two-tire internet. That means that certain um, websites or could be accessed faster if the content providers pay an extra fee to the internet service provider. So that could be a form of discrimination and fragmentation. The other one is uh, what three, uh, Citroen talks about, and it, uh, it's like cyber, cyber bunkers. I mean, the formation of islands of uh, islands of security or gated communities. They are they are called like that as well. Uh, that that is to say that for security reasons, people will start to like create uh, walls, and they will be like safe islands. And, and this could fragment the, the internet. This is for fear of uh, having abuses, spam, uh, virus, so different reasons may lead to this form of fragmentation. The other one is the geographic uh, fragmentation. I mean, uh, the formation of parallel or alternative domain name system, which means that we won't have only one domain name system, but different, perhaps in different languages. So this could mean another form of, of fragmentation. Uh, and then um, I think that there could be a positive way of, of fragmentation or diversity, diversity that could be a multilingual internet, which I think this could be great. Uh, because nowadays most of the sites are in English, so this again, even if developing countries have access, not everybody knows English, and so uh, the, the main content is in English, so it could be great to have multilingual internet, uh, giving people the possibility to access the content in different languages, but not only the same content translated into different uh, languages, but it would be great to have con uh, local content, I mean, Perhaps, uh, rea no, perhaps not, for sure, realities are different, they have different needs, so it would be great to, fa to have uh, the proper content addressing local needs. So that would be like a multilingual internet. So this would be a good form of more than fragmentation, it would be like diversification.